Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon and today uh, we will talk about a bit different topic than we usually do. So we will not have a lot of coding in here, but we will talk about how to deploy your Ionic application as a website to both Firebase hosting and also um, getting it deployed to just a regular web server. So let's dive into this. I'm just using an old application I did for the translate package. And the first thing when you want to deploy your Ionic application as a website is to build it. And you can simply do this by running Ionic build dash dash prod dash dash release. So what this does is it's adding some optimization scripts or running those scripts actually on your application. And the first one is actually not completely mandatory, but if you're using different environments inside your uh, environments file, like here, the first one or the production one, if you build it like this, always the production one will be taken. So you could have a little uh, change in there, like a staging in an environment you normally use or a testing environment, and then the production environment in here. So once you go ahead and run this, you will actually end up with a www folder in your application. I can also bring this one in, which then holds a lot of JavaScript files, text, and also an index HTML. So basically we only have to deploy this folder on some server or Firebase, Heroku, whatever it is, and then everything should hopefully work fine. So actually we could dive into that folder and call, I don't know, is it called simple or HTTP? Yeah, I think it's called HTTP server. So let's try and see. Yep. So we can simply bring up a super easy HTTP server in that folder that will then serve our application. So that's the one I'm using from one of the recent tutorials. All right, so let's see how we can get this one to Firebase. Oh, let's cancel the server again. Let's get back. And then first of all, uh, you are gonna have to install the Firebase tools globally best, I would say. So if you've done this, you can go ahead by calling Firebase login, which I actually don't need because I am already logged in. And then finally, you can call Firebase init in your project. And at that point, um, the initialization, is that a word? Did I say it wrong? I'm not completely sure. Anyhow, will take place. And the problem is you cannot create a Firebase application from the CLI at this point. So you're gonna have to make sure that upfront you already create some Firebase application like I did. Uh, I call this Ionic Hosting. Actually, uh, I did some things, but that doesn't really matter right now. So then you can go ahead and select Hosting um, and press the space bar. And then you can press Enter, so space is just for the selection. So then you're gonna select the default uh, Firebase project. And what did I say? Oh uh, yeah, Ionic Hosting, that's what it is. What do you want to use as your public directory? I hope my face is not covering this right now. So of course that is our folder we inspected previously. Then uh, yes, we want to rewrite all URLs and the already exists. So we don't want to replace it. So that's the answers you should give at that point. And you see you got a new Firebase JSON in the project which basically tells Firebase about where, uh, which folder to use, what can be ignored, how to rewrite. And then in the Firebase RC, we see that it's connected now to the project we selected. So you can easily change this out if you made a typo or select the wrong project and change projects later on. So then simply go ahead and run Firebase deploy. And that's really all you have to do at this point. So, um, if you don't know how to host your Ionic application as a website, this is definitely not true anymore now. This basically takes like five minutes or less to get up a little Firebase app that's just a few clicks and then connect it with the CLI and then hosting your Ionic application. So uh, depending on how fast your internet is, I actually got a new connection here. So it is a bit faster today. I'm really happy about that. Uh, we see the project console, which I was already in, and then the hosting URL. So let's hope, yes, there we go. We see the application we just used and it hopefully still works. Yes, I can still switch the language. It does completely what it should. 
So now uh, you get the application ready. And if we take a look at the hosting tab of the selected application, we can see that uh, two days ago I already deployed something and then today, uh, yep, yeah, that's today. Okay, so I can prove it is today 10.03 and time for a good coffee. Ooh. We've now deployed a new version and that's pretty cool. So you can see all the version history in here as well. But what's cool as well is um, right now this is like a standard URL or domain from Firebase. So if you just want to share uh, some ideas with your friends, that's no problem. But many times, or maybe you want to use this as the real hosting for your application. Um, no problem, I do this actually as well for some. In that case, you can go ahead and click connect to main. And at this point, you're gonna have um, the ownership about a domain. So let's say DevTactic or the Ionic Academy are domains that I own. So in that case, I could go ahead in here and simply say uh, funnyapp.devdactic.com. Um, actually, you could use both a subdomain or a regular uh, domain and then go ahead. So at this point, it is not overwriting, so don't be scared. Um, what you need to do is um, actually I already did this for once. So that's kind of a little problem right here. Try if I use uh, like whatever.com. So I don't own whatever.com. I could say I own it. But then you're gonna have to put a txt um, record for your DNS settings. So this is now a bit about configuring your domain. Maybe you haven't done this before, but it's actually quite simple. So let me show you. Um, for example, I own a few domains on Namecheap. So this is no promotion for Namecheap. I actually left them uh, recently and switched to a new hosting. But anyhow, just to show you, so I own this iamcreator.io domain. Um, it is a little side project I did last year. Uh, if you're interested, reach out. I think, still think it's a pretty cool idea. Um, but anyhow, it doesn't really took off back then and now I'm a bit struggling to keep on working. You can create your own site, whatever. Not the topic of this video. Anyhow, what you do is uh, once Firebase tells you to verify your ownership, you basically copy this value. You go to the uh, DNS tab of your hosting, uh, you create a new record, and then there are different records uh, with different types. You don't really have to know about them. All you need to know is you're gonna create a TXT record um, and then put in the value. So I'll not do this in here, um, but just wanted to show you, um, actually, let's see this in action on something else. Okay, this is German, but still you can see this part. And then at some point you will have the TXT files as well. So this is basically for every hosting where you got the domain, um, you're allowed to add those records. And as you've seen um, with the, uh, where were we, uh, stuff.devtactic.com, um, for devtactic or for the subdomain, I actually did the txt file already. So that's the check mark. And then you also have to set the A records pointing to the actual IP of the Firebase hosting. So that's the second step. But again, simply create the record you need. Uh, host if it's like, um, like in this case or whatever, devtactic.com. So the plain uh, root domain, it is simply an add most of the time and then the value. Uh, if it's a subdomain, I actually don't know where I did this. Um, might be a bit different, but there are always guides on this, especially for Firebase connecting it. So then at some point, um, this might take like hours to actually a day. Um, I think I somewhere linked this in the tutorial. There is a tool like, a, yeah. Okay, good to know that I messed up the link definitely messed up the link. So tools like the DNS checker, let's say devtactic.com. I want to check the A records and then I see where the record is actually pointing to. And yesterday or the day before I set up devhosting.devtactic.com. So let's put this into the DNS checking tool and then we will see it is actually pointing to the value of the 
um, Firebase hosting, can't really see it anywhere, but it is definitely there. So if I now go to devhosting, devtactic.com, I see the example I deployed yesterday, but we made a new deployment just minutes ago. And there you go, host it on your own subdomain, cool domain, your Ionic application again, just in minutes. So um, really don't want to waste your time. So therefore, let's continue to the second part of this video, which is um, putting the stuff you got basically everywhere. So I, of course, own the devtactic domain and I got access to the server. Most of the time are for standard Linux or I don't know what's the server. Uh, sorry, haven't worked with this in a long time. Uh, you get like this folder type where your public HTML files are hosted. So let's make a folder and call this, I don't know, testing. Um, so now we could put some files into this folder and then I should hopefully be able to reach it on devtactic.com slash testing. So in that folder, um, we want to put our Ionic application. If you don't put your Ionic application at the root of your domain, so of course I don't want to put it to devtactic.com where the block is, uh, in that case, I'm going to have to make a little change to the index HTML that is generated in the www folder um, and change the base href from something like slash to, I don't know. So we call this one testing. So now um, you will see why this makes a huge difference. And then you're gonna have to somehow sync your files. So uh, let me just quickly upload them uh, from this folder. Whatever, where do we go? Academy translates or so rsync uh, progress as well. So then I wanna use the www, come on please, that folder and everything in there everything in there please and I want to upload it to my domain slash testing so hopefully the sync runs through and okay there we go so if I now check my folder I see that all the files just arrived there so let's go back to the server and let's refresh this and voila there we go our Ionic application is now hosted in this folder on my main server as well. Okay, great success. Um, now, why did we do this? Um, maybe I can show you. So let's remove this. Let's do the sync one more time, which is pretty fast because only the index needs to be updated. And then we go back and refresh and we should see that, yes, exactly this, um, of course, home is not found as well. Okay, now everything's wrong. So let's see again. So we are still able to access the page, but actually we get a lot of errors because the complete folder is running inside of the testing folder, as you can see. But the sources, or if you go to the network, you can see that the index HTML is trying to load those files from the main domain. And of course, they're not there. They're at devtactic.com slash testing and then slash uh, main whatever or uh, polyfills, runtime, all of this. And if you change the base ref, uh, you can actually also use your application in a subfolder of your domain. And that's it for today. Not a lot of code, uh, but I still hope you enjoyed this uh, video a bit about also behind the scenes how I manage the things are a bit terminal stuff, a bit Firebase. So all in all, I think a great video. Uh, if you think that as well, please uh, give this video a like below. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Also check out the Thursday edition, which is my developer vlog. Uh, really would love to see you in there as well. And of course, inside my Ionic Academy, check out the link below the video. That's all for today. Um, build great apps. Let me know if you deployed your Ionic app as a website somewhere in the comments. And then I need to breathe and I'll catch you inside the next video.